Hilton is launching a new affordable hotel brand. Yeah. Uh, targeted specifically to young travelers. That's right. It's Bingo. called True, right? It's yeah. True by Hilton. And it, it's expected to debut later this year. Right. And they're going to be in the $90 to $100 range in terms of room rate. So very value based. And they are going after the millennials because millennials, 110 million of them, they want to travel. They want to spend their parents' money. They want to take whatever money they're making and spend it on what? Travel. And so they're more interested in the travel experience versus sitting in a luxury hotel lounge. And so these hotels are built around it. Here's the challenge with the hotel industry. Hilton alone, this will be brand number 13. Can you name 13 Hilton-owned brands? No. Most people can't. Starwood is merging with Marriott. Look at all their brands under those umbrellas. So I think what's happening is the hotel market's getting more and more fragmented in terms of segmentation, looking to peel off these different niches, and in the case of Hilton, instead of going out and acquiring a different hotel brand, they decided to build one from the ground up, and we've seen other brands do that as well over the years. And they're hoping to build loyalty with these young travelers who are, you know, traveling on the cheap, hopefully in the future. And step them up, ultimately, maybe to the Waldorf Astoria collection right. or something like that, right? So, yeah, absolutely, that's what you're seeing. You're absolutely seeing that, and that's you're seeing that in the automotive industry. You look at Mercedes-Benz and what they did coming out with their C-Class. It used to be this really expensive, you know, hard to attain, you got to be a CEO to buy the S-Class, but then you could buy a Mercedes-Benz, you know, for mid-30s. Right. And all of the manufacturers have done that because they want to own you through the life cycle of whatever it is you do, and the travel industry is no different. Womb and you see that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? yeah. exactly. Um, let me ask you, though, if you're traveling from abroad to the United States and you're coming to New York City, is, are one of these blue hotels going to say, this is a hotel in New York City, but it's actually in Queens? It's not located next to the Waldorf Astoria on Fifth Avenue right. or something so, like that. So very important, you know where you're staying, right? So when I did a trip to Paris, I ended up 45 minutes outside right. of Paris. Right, because it's Paris, 30 years but it's ago. really... It right, wasn't yeah. really Paris. Right. I mean, it was... So you have to, you know, use a travel professional, make sure you know where you're booking. If you're going to do it yourself, it's your mistake. If you book the wrong hotel and it's one of these non-refundable hotels, they are not giving you your money back and you have nobody to advocate on your behalf. So that's, you know, what they say, pilot error. That's booker error and you're stuck. And that's why, believe it or not, millennials, even though they grew up on the internet, many of them are turned into travel professionals because they know it's hard to sort through all of the stuff. They're very skeptical in many cases of what they see, including reviews, because who's reviewing that hotel? The guy who works there? Mm -hmm. so, you know, somebody they're right, paying, right. or is that a true yeah, guest? Yeah, supervisor stuff sometimes, you never know. They're, they're, you know, that, and they're skeptical, and it's really ironic because that was the advent of do-it-yourself, and they have the, they're, they're influenced the most as, out of all travel segments when they go for advice. When I think about this, I think one advantage has to be that these are supposed to be all new construction, right? So yeah. that's got to give them a leg up on all the other economy hotels that are available. Right, because they're fresh, they've got the latest amenities, they're, they're laid out properly, and that's really important. At the end of the day, they're looking at it, and it's about $85,000 per room in an average hotel that they build under this true brand to, to bring it to market. And so that's a really low cost per room compared to, let's say, the Mandarin Oriental and what they're going to put into a room, which is going to be a huge multiple of that. That means they can charge the lower rates, accommodate folks, and it's clean, it's fresh, it's new. I think millennials are going to be all over this, as Pretty well cool. as value travelers, any type of age. Yeah. Makes cool. a lot of sense. Yeah. Mark Murphy, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you.